Okay, my friends, this should be very interesting because I've been studying the chickenate pathway and how plants nurture themselves and gene, GM, uh, GMO plants have been modified to go around that pathway which is absolutely vital in plants and bacteria. The key is bacteria. So they retracted this paper about whether it was safe or not based on the studies and all this data that they had and they made it sound like very, very safe. And here's the key, it's not necessarily unsafe, but it's not necessarily safe. Well, what does that mean, Roger? Well, let's look into it, the reason. And it's got to do with the bacteria and how, how sustainable the bacteria is against this. We need to draw a line here, and this could, this could be very, very simple to fix if there's a problem. There may not even be a problem. Let's look at it, and we can do some very, very simple experiments and tests and find out if this stuff is damaging the bacteria that's absolutely required for vital life. If it is damaging it, can we replenish it? Can we stop the damage somehow? You know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of ways to go with this, but we got to start. Okay, let's think this over by the power of logic, the logos, thinking. Let's just try to understand it from the top to the bottom. These are bacteria. And you, you have thousands and thousands of them. Different species. Trillions and trillions of them in total. Now, they have regular DNA just like we do. But one of their little pits of DNA says, I'm going to make a ribosome. That's my job. And they scoot, scoot these little balls out there called ribosomes. Now, uh, this is a single cell. They're tiny. It's a single cell and very, very tiny. And they have some flagellas and some don't. They move through the body quickly and they squirt these ribosomes everywhere. Now, where do the ribosomes go? They go inside of cells. They collect inside of the cells. That's a regular animal cell. Right? Ribosomes just go in here and they float around in here. And there can be, literally they claim, millions of ribosomes in one single cell. That's how small they are. And they collect on this thing called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It's, a, it's like a labyrinth going in to get to where the nucleus is, and that is where your DNA is. And they claim, now I, I can't verify any of the, these claims being made, but they claim that your DNA is assaulted th thousands of times a day. And a DNA has, is broken and it gets repaired. But to do that repair requires enzymes. If you don't have the enzymes, your DNA can get damaged and you can, just can't repair it. Or if you don't have enough of the ribosomes, and it's getting thousands and thousands of damages a day because of who knows what, some kind of toxin in your body. You have to be able to fix that, so you need those ribosomes. Ribosomes you can add, basically they're enzymes. You don't have to have them, have them made by bacteria, but that's what the bacteria do. That is their job, is to create ribosomes. So if you don't have the bacteria to make the ribosomes, you might be able to supplement them. And here's what the ribosomes look like. They're little tiny balls. And they trigger. You know, something pops them, and they, they're being used. If there's millions of them in your cells, they're not just hanging around, they're gonna stay there forever. They're, brrr, they're doing a job inside your cell. And these are going continuously unsheathing, creating enzymes, creating proteins. Enzymes break stuff, proteins build stuff. Think of it that way. These make bones and, and skin and teeth and everything else, and these break down all the stuff you're eating. 
so you got components that these can build back up. But they are both extremely, extremely exotic particles. Now, when they come in, they're so tiny, millions can fit in a single cell. But once they open up, they in instantaneously, I mean, and I like to say instantaneously, it's just exactly like electricity. It's exactly the same thing as it is electricity. It's click chemistry, elect electrical discharge into, into something that accepts that discharge and breaks it all down instantly. And this would take up to millions of years to do this chemistry because what it's doing is breaking half-lives and it's twisting and changing and, and adding and moving electrons, but it's, it's at the speed of magnetism. It's just, it's there. And it's done. But there's so much of it, you, you just never could do that in a whole lifetime do what one of these does before you can snap your fingers. And this is going on in your body 24-7. And if you don't have enough enzymes, you, or if you don't have enough bacteria, you're not going to have enough enzymes. If you don't have enough enzymes, you don't get the chemistry done. You don't get the chemistry done, something is going to be affected. And it depends on what bacteria got damaged. Okay, in your DNA, the, the sequences have to be correct. And there's a repair enzyme. It's called uracil DNA glycolase. And it removes it, removes the problems, it fixes it, preventing these mutations. And, and they, they can see them as genetic mutations, or they could just be not turned on or off. Not everything that they think are, is a gene problem is a gene problem. If you have chronic issues with your bacteria and you're not creating the right enzymes, it's going to look like a genetic problem because it's not the gene hasn't sequenced correctly because there wasn't this cascade of chemistry to turn it on, turn it off, break it, build it, whatever, whatever it is. So if you don't have this particular enzyme, right, the enzyme activation aid introduces the uracil, and you have to have that to fix your DNA. You don't have that, you're done. Or if you don't have enough of it, certain things are not going to get fixed. There are going to be issues. You're going to, you're going to be get almost like inf inflammation. Your body's going to be on fire trying to fix these things. All right, bacteria are the factories that produce the enzymes. You don't have the bacteria, you're not going to get the enzyme. So it really, it's as simple as that. And if you don't have that enzyme, which is a ribosome, you, you're done. The ribosome basically is the enzyme. All right, just to show you, here's, here's what it says. Yes, ribosomes are, an, a ribosome is an enzyme. Specifically, they call it a ribozyme because its catalytic activity comes from ribosomal, not protein. It is composed of both RNA and proteins. RNA is the part that catalyzes the formation of peptide bonds. It goes on and on and on, a bunch of stuff. But it's the enzyme. A ribosome is the enzyme. You don't have the bacteria, you don't have the ribosome. How much simpler could it get? All right. I showed you this, how the bacteria itself creates ribosomes. So in this box is this, which is the ribosome. Well, let's look at a ribosome carefully and see what these little balls are. What, what does that mean? Protein chain. And what's going on here? Let's see if we can figure it out. So now, we know we have to have the enzymes, and they're just as complicated as can be. And they come from the ribosomes, which come from the bacteria. And it, this is the process of making them. And here's how they snip into the DNA to fix the DNA, to fix it. But let's see what an actual ribosome is constructed of. Because it's so far sophisticated, you can't, you can't hardly believe. Well, it's just beyond belief. Let me put it that way. 
These are amino acids. I think there's like 20, 22, something like that. Every one of them comes down here and they attach to each other in a certain sequence. It's called a polypeptide chain. And then they come in and they program, the, they transfer the, this program into the ribosome. I'm sorry, into the mRNA strand. I think it's all wrapped up inside the ball. They show it running through here. Probably it's an easier way to show it. But they end up being in a tiny, tiny little ball. And that tiny little ball goes out and ends up being inside of a cell. And if the cell needs whatever that thing is going to create, it says, hey, here's your trigger. Do your job. And at that point, all that stuff does instantly, magnetically, basically. Because it's working at the speed of light in all effect. The only thing that limits an enzyme from continuing to break things down and do its job, because it doesn't get used up. One enzyme will do a thousand different other, it'll kill a thousand guys. And it does it instantly. The only thing that it, it stops an enzyme from activating instantly is its ability to get to what they call the substrate, the underneath. Whatever it's attacking, is if it can hit it, it's done. You go right through it. They're just unbelievably fast working. And I mean so unbelievable. Millions of years in less than a, a microsecond. That's pretty unbelievable. And the reason it does it is because of half-lives. This is what I don't think the, the biologists understand. Okay, this is the thing that I would like to be able to dispute one way or the other. And we can figure out one way or the other if this is true. They say it does not interrupt the endocrine system. <clears throat> Okay, everything relies on these, these um, enzymes, and these are where the enzymes are created, in that system, in the endocrine system. I want to do some research. I, would, I, I mean, I don't want to do it personally, but I would like to see it done. I can give plenty of advice. <laughs> I'm real good with advice. But it's, it's, it's really a simple process. You need to find out what's in the... the bacterial, you know, microbiome and, and what happens to which people because their biome is different. And all that's a, that it's a simple fecal swab and, and, and test it and see what's high, what's low, or what's normal. And eventually there'll be a database that will make sense. And it won't take long. And the, I, this is not expensive stuff to do. Once the process is set and ready to go, it's you just come in, you give them a fecal swab, just like you would have a urine test. And um, and again, I think we could maybe adjust things. I'm not saying you have to be glyphosate; you got to stop using it. I'm just saying, what does it do? And can we adjust for that? Maybe. It's something to look at, but it's, it's better than not thinking, because right now I don't think they're, they're realizing it's the bacteria that's in our body that's being damaged, not just the chemical that's floating around in there. It's the bacteria that's dying, so it can't create the chemistry, which is the enzymes.